All right, welcome back. We're going to talk about manometers now. And I have to be a little honest with you. You'll, you'll go through your whole life and probably never see a manometer. Um, manometers are a device that uses the first rule and um, the hydrostatic equation, delta P is equal to rho G delta H, to measure pressure changes, right? Um, pressure differences, really. Uh, if you imagine we have a, uh, for example, if you look at this drawing over here on the left, if we have a um, uh, an area A that we want to know the pressure in, um, if we know the height between difference between C and B, obviously we can calculate the pressure at A, right? Uh, and so the manometers once were very common, um, so common that we still use a lot of the language for it, like a pressure head, right? Um, head used to describe the height of a liquid in a manometer. So you would, you would read off, you have uh, like two feet of head. Um, and what that would mean is you had two feet of pressure and you'd have to, well, in practice, you wouldn't really be converting it into a pressure, right? You would just know what to do when the, the height changed of the manometer. Um, but nowadays, pressure sensors are so cheap. Um, and it's, it's really remarkable what has happened in, since I actually was an undergrad, because when, when I was an undergrad, you still saw manometers. They weren't common, but you still saw them. Okay, so what is a, we have a question. Let's try to answer it. What is the gauge pressure at A? And remember, we, we haven't talked about gauge pressure, but gauge pressure is um, is gauge pressure, P gauge, is equal to P absolute minus P atmospheric. And the whole reason that gauge pressure came about is because it's much, much cheaper to make a pressure gauge that compares a pressure to atmospheric pressure than it is to make a gauge that measures the absolute pressure. And so nearly every pressure gauge you buy that is reasonably priced is going to be a measure gauge pressure. And it works pretty well because at least in a single room, um, the atmospheric pressure is, is basically the same everywhere. So you're measuring the pressure everywhere relative to a common, uh, a, a common datum or datum. Um, so that's what gauge pressure is. So if we wanna measure this, um, we need to know what models we should use. So let's, let's talk about our models we have. We have rule number one, and we have the hydrostatic rule, hydrostatic equation, which is delta P is equal to rho G delta H, or, Another way to put it, this is a good time to pause our video and try to write down that equation um, with, the, with the numbers that are in it, the subscripts. It is P1 minus P2 is equal to rho G H2 minus H1. Great, and what assumptions do we need? Well, as always, A, fluid at rest, and B, density, is constant, All right? So um, we're gonna label this as number one, as our rule number one. And we're gonna say from one to two, we have um, yeah, <laughs> PB minus PC is equal to rho G yc minus yb okay now that's great but that doesn't actually help us um because we're trying to figure out what a is right so let's do a couple things to this equation to help us out one is let's call this c minus b this yc minus yb this height um, and we didn't draw in our x our coordinate system here. So there's our coordinate system. So as you know what the y direction is now, which is vertical. Um, we're going to draw in an h there, and that h is basically yc minus yb. So this becomes h. And finally, we know because of rule number one that pb is the same as pa, the same pressure, because we're in the same fluid and it's not moving. So we can say this is pa. A. And finally, we also know what PC is, right? So if the, the surface of the fluid is in contact with air, its pressure has to be the same as the air, 
right? And if the pressure of the air is zero, because if you imagine P atmospheric minus P atmospheric is equal to zero, um, then we know that PC in gauge pressure is equal to zero, okay? And again, the reason why gauge pressure makes atmospheric pressure zero is because basically what we're doing is we're taking the absolute pressure and subtracting atmospheric pressure from it. So atmospheric pressure minus atmospheric pressure is zero. All right, so now that we've done that, we're gonna take two to three, and we have that PA is equal to rho GH, and we are done, which is, um, yeah, pretty easy, right? Um, let's, let's, let's do a couple side notes here, uh, a couple side note questions. First question, can gauge pressure be negative, right? Think about it. Um, yeah, circle an answer, commit, right? Commit to something. Um, the answer to that is, and remember you can always pause these videos if you need to think about it. The answer to that is yes, it can be negative. Now, here's, a, here's another question. Can absolute pressure be absolute? Can absolute pressure be absolute? That's a fine, you know what? This, I've been using these notes for years and that's the first time I've noticed that mistake. Can absolute pressure be negative? And the answer to that is actually no. Now, you may have heard in some cases it can be, and that's when you redefine like a thermodynamic pressure or something like that. But in, in real terms, pressure cannot be less than zero. It's just, you, you, it's um, in a fluid, it cannot be less than zero, right? Great, so what is the, so um, let's look at another manometer. We're gonna make this a little bit more complicated. We have now a, a ball with gas in it, air, with a density of 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. Um, then we have a tube that connects to water which has a density of 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. This tube does a little jupe, and the water um, starts at, at a height of Y1 and goes to a height of Y2. And you want to know what the pressure at A is. Great. What model should we use? Well, we only have two models, right? We're going to need rule number one and uh, Delta P is equal to rho G delta H, or as it's also known, P1 minus P2 is equal to rho G, oops, H2 minus H1. Um, as you'll see, that get, if, you, if you write this down every time, it gets a little confusing because you have to get the subscripts right. And the subscripts might not, we're, we have a Y3 here, for example, that doesn't fit into that equation very easy. So it's better to, know and kind of memorize that the, 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 the delta P and the delta H are opposite in directions, right? And then you'll be fine. Great, so um, let's get started. We're gonna label this, oops, label this as our equation one, and then one to two. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at A, okay? Um, and then we're gonna move our way through the fluid up to Y2 because we know that Y2 is at atmospheric pressure. So that's a known that we have. We're gonna try to connect those two together. Um, and remember most of your undergrad is the, the practice of trying to figure out how to get to a single unknown. And actually that's true for most of the rest of your career too, right? Once you get to a single unknown, you can solve for it and get your answer, right? To whatever question you're trying to answer. Cool. So um, if we do one to two, we have um, P1 minus P3, the bottom minus the top is equal to rho G, rho air times G times Y3 minus Y1, right? And over here on the right-hand side, we wrote down the different heights over here. So, um, we know that P3 is actually PA, right? So let's relabel that PA um, because of the rule number one, right? We can move sideways as much as we want. Um, P3 is actually equal to PA. 
Um, and we now are going to rearrange our equation to solve for P1. So 2 to 3 gives us P1 is equal to rho r times g times y3 minus y1. And next, we're going to now do the same equation, but do it in the water. So we're going to do 1 to 3. And now you're starting to hopefully see the utility of numbering our equations in this way. We can reuse equations when we use these numbers. So we're going to use equation 1 twice. Oh, sorry, not to three, it's to four. Now the downside is sometimes you lose track of the numbers and that's bad news. So one to four gives us P, uh, P, you know, we gotta do these opposite from each other. It doesn't really matter. Let's do P2 minus P1 is equal to rho water times G times um, Y1 minus Y2. So, um, I, I did this on purpose in my notes. Um, you'll notice that I have top minus bottom here for these pressures and bottom minus top for these pressures. In reality, right, all that matters is that you, you do heights in the opposite direction, right? So uh, bottom minus top is equal to rho g top minus bottom. Here we have top minus bottom rho g bottom minus top. Um, I I think I would actually prefer to just throw a negative sign in there and keep the, the H's and the pressures in the same order, but I, I believe this is what your book does. And so we're trying to be consistent with your book. Okay, so um, yeah, let's rearrange that. Four to five, and we're gonna solve for P1. Um, and also we know that P2 is equal to P atmospheric. Um, four to five, we know that that's P atmospheric. So we are going to say that P1 is equal to P atmospheric minus rho water times G times Y1 minus Y2. Great. And we have two equations with uh, P1, um, two equations equal to P1, so we can set those equal to each other. So three plus five to six gives us uh, rho A G. Oh, um, here's the other thing we can do. We'll do it in a second. Rho A G um, Y3 minus Y1 plus P A is equal to P atmospheric minus rho water G Y1 minus Y2. Um, so we aren't actually given, well, we are given uh, y1 is equal to zero, so we might as well cancel that out now. And um, we can solve for PA here. So let's do it. So PA, six to seven, PA is equal to P atmospheric minus um, rho water G y1 minus y2 minus rho air g y3, right? If we substitute in our numbers here, we get that PA is equal to 101.3 kilopascals. Um, and I'm gonna mix units here, but remember when you do the calculations, you're gonna have to make sure you make the units consistent. Um, so actually let's do that right now. Instead of kilopascals, we're gonna say 101.3 times 10 to the third pascals minus 1000 times 9.8 times um, Y1 minus Y2. Y1 minus Y2 is just going to be negative 10.2 meters per second. So zero minus 10.2 meters. And this is uh, kilograms per meter cubed. And this is 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and um, we subtract then 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed times 9.8 meters per second times two meters. Um, and when we sum all these together, we get that PA is equal to, uh, 
2001.2 times 10 to the third pascals, which is actually equal to 201.2 kilopascals, or about two bar, right? Because remember, a bar is equal to one atmospheric. Now, if you actually calculate each of these different components and then write them down, what you'll find out is that this part right here, the air, is about a thousand times less than this part right here, the water. And it makes sense because the density of water is a thousand times greater than that of air. So in this problem, could we neglect air? Go ahead, pause it and answer that yourself. Think about what kind of significant figures we usually ask you to do in this class. Great, okay, so can we neglect air? And the answer is usually, unless delta H is large, i.e. on the order of about um, uh, 100 times the water height or liquid height, liquid height, or on the order of uh, 100, meters, right? It's about 100 meters, then suddenly now we're getting on the order of a tenth of an atmosphere. That's not right. You're getting to the order of um, heights that actually matter in terms of pressures that you can measure easily, right? So if H is, if delta H for the gas is large, then we have to include it, right? Great. Right. So our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, this can get really tedious, by the way, because um, in theory, you could have multiple different fluids or you're measuring one liquid with another liquid. So you have multiple different liquids in your manometer. And let's be honest, it's really good practice to try to add lots of different liquids. So um, we're going to talk about something called the manometer rule next, uh, next video, which simplifies all this and makes it very easy to calculate the pressures in manometers.